There are many wireless robotic lawnmowers nowadays, but not all of them work as one would really wish. These two, however, do. In today's video, I have a comparison test of what I believe to be the two best GPS robots currently available. The new Segway Navimo 1 series versus the well-known Luba 2 AWD from Mamotion. What do both devices have to offer in comparison? How do they perform in practice? And which mower robot is suitable for your garden? We'll thoroughly explore these questions in today's video, so let's start right after the intro. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel now and activate the bell to not miss any future videos. You can find the current prices of the robots to support this channel in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support, and let's get started. I am regularly asked which robotic lawnmower I can currently recommend. My direct answer, these two here, the price performance king Navimo from Segway and the ultimate all-in-one device, the Luba from Mamotion. Both are undoubtedly top-notch devices that I can highly recommend. But which one is more suitable for you and your garden? Today's video provides answers. It's important to mention up front, I've already tested and reviewed both mower robots separately. You can find the detailed individual videos now in the info card at the top right or on my channel. Today's video focuses exclusively on comparing these two devices. Okay, so let's start with the exterior. Regarding the appearance, I don't want to say much as it's a matter of taste and thus subjective. More objectively, the difference in size and weight between these two robots stands out. While the Navimo is quite compact and handy, the Luba, as you can see, really stands out in this regard. Not only is it wider and longer, but also flatter, as shown by the displayed dimensions. In terms of build quality, both mower robots make a very high quality and robust impression. Only by touching them can you feel that the Luba, with its thick plastic housing, metal wheel suspension, and wheels, has a significantly more massive construction. This results, however, in a comparatively high weight of 18.5 kilograms for the Luba, while the Navimo weighs only half as much at 10.9 kilograms. You should definitely keep this in mind if you need to transport or lift the device frequently, for example, when cleaning. In this regard, both devices perform equally well as they're IPX6 certified, allowing them to be carefully cleaned with a water hose, saving us a lot of effort. Compared to the first Luba, a lot has improved with the tires. The new Luba 2 has what are called Omni wheels at the front, allowing it to turn on the spot and be much gentler on the lawn. Naturally, the Navimo is much lighter than the Luba and has two large steering rollers, making it even gentler on the lawn. Additionally, thanks to the good tires on both devices, it's very, very rare for them to get stuck. As shown in the graphic, the Navimo has a significantly larger wheel diameter of 240 millimeters compared to the Luba's 170 millimeters, but the Luba compensates with its powerful wheel drive. In practice, I haven't had any problems with either device getting stuck. Only on very muddy grounds with little grass does the Luba have a clear advantage. This brings us to the terrain capabilities of the robots, where the result is quite obvious. The Luba, with its rough tire profile and all-wheel drive, can not only handle slopes of up to an incredible 80%, where the Navimo tops out at 30%, but also deals better with uneven terrain thanks to its flexible front axle. So if you have a highly uneven area with many holes or hills, the Luba is the better choice so far. Another crucial criterion is the maximum area each device can manage. I have already covered the specific size variants in detail in the individual videos. In summary, the Navimo with 500 or 800 square meters is more suited for small to medium sized gardens, while the Luba can handle areas up to 10,000 square meters. This is an important consideration as it may not be possible to manage larger areas than those specified by the manufacturer. 
The larger the model, the bigger the built-in battery, as shown in the graphic. For example, the small Navimo I-105 can operate for a maximum of one hour, while the large Luba 5000 can mow continuously for up to three hours before needing to return to the charging station. Depending on the size of the areas, both devices will need different numbers of attempts to cover them completely. Speaking of multiple areas, multi-zone management is now pretty much standard, and both devices handle this perfectly. Thanks to the GPS navigation, which I'll discuss in more detail shortly, creating multiple zones is no longer a challenge for either device, as I've shown in the separate individual videos. Only the Navimo offers the advantage of AI-assisted edge mapping, which can save a few minutes on large areas with a clean lawn edge. Also, correcting a faulty map is somewhat more convenient and easier with the Navimo, thanks to the eraser icon shown. Regarding the maximum possible number of zones, the Luba has a slight advantage. While the Navimo allows us to create up to 12 zones, which I think is more than sufficient, the Luba goes even further. Depending on the model variant, the Luba allows us to create between 10 and 30 zones, which is very advantageous if you have a very large, complicated garden. This allows us to divide the garden into many individual sections, which can be adjusted and managed independently. Both devices share this capability. The key aspect of both mower robots is their operating principle and how they navigate the lawn, where both are very similar. This is another reason why these devices are so well suited for a direct comparison. Both the Navimo and the Luba rely on a combination of satellite positioning with correction data and a visual component using a camera. This means that both the robot itself and the GNSS antennas receive satellite signals, which are then processed through very complex calculations with correction data to enable precise positioning to within a few centimeters. The prerequisite for this, of course, is that both the robot and the antenna can receive a sufficient number of satellites and are not obstructed by large trees or buildings. Generally, the more satellites that can be received, the better. Comparing the two GNSS antennas, we see a notable difference. The Luba's antenna, at about 1.7 meters, is significantly taller than the Navimo's, which is just one meter tall. The antenna's diameter is also much larger, at about 155 millimeters compared to 95 millimeters, allowing it to receive significantly more satellites in practice. This is particularly well illustrated when looking at the app. Both devices can display the number and orientation of the received satellites. Focusing on the shared satellites, those received by both the robot and the antenna, the Navimo receives a total of 15 satellites, while the Luba receives 27. It's important to note both devices are positioned in the same spot, right next to each other, so any shielding affects both mower robots equally. From practical experience, I can say that the number of satellites is usually sufficient to ensure good positioning in most cases. In my test, I placed the antennas of both mower robots under a large tree and found that the Navimo had more difficulty in determining and maintaining a precise position. The Luba, on the other hand, had no such issues, indicating better reception with this device. If the satellite reception becomes too weak because the robot's under a large tree during operation, both devices have a backup, the built-in camera. This camera supports navigation in GPS-poor areas by scanning notable landmarks, linking them to the map, and orienting itself accordingly. See the separate individual videos for more details. In practice, both robots mow in precise parallel lines, as you can see, which works very well with sufficient satellites and is more efficient than a random mowing pattern. Both devices have ample settings for mowing direction and pattern. However, in a direct comparison, I find that these settings are more user-friendly and clearly presented in the Navimo app. Another aspect that affects the mowing result is the cutting width and height. 
As shown in the graphic for cutting height, there's not much difference between the two devices. The Navimo can mow slightly lower with a range of 20 to 60 millimeters, while the Luba can be set slightly higher from 25 to 70 millimeters. The differences are more pronounced when we look at the cutting width. The Navimo has a classic cutting disc with a typical cutting width of 180 millimeters, while the Luba has two cutting discs, resulting in a massive 400 millimeter cutting width. This allows the Luba not only to handle larger areas, but also to finish mowing much faster. So if it's important to you that the lawn is mowed in the shortest possible time, you should choose the Luba. Let's move on to the next very important point, obstacle detection. Both devices use a front-mounted camera to detect obstacles without contact. The Luba's dual camera has a sufficient field of view of 119 degrees horizontally by 99 degrees vertically, allowing the robot to detect obstacles both in front of it and partially to the sides without any issues. Regarding the Navimo's camera, I couldn't find specific information about its field of view, but I assume it uses a wide-angle camera as it can detect objects slightly to the side. From practical experience, I can say that there have been surprising improvements since I last tested these devices separately for you. Both mower robots reliably detected and avoided large obstacles like garden furniture and people. The same applies to smaller objects like a soccer ball, a watering can, or medium-sized flower pots. Both devices were able to recognize these without any problems. However, with smaller objects, the situation is a bit different. Since the last video, the Navimo's obstacle detection has significantly improved and is almost as good as that of the works Landroid Vision, which I've also reviewed and tested. You can find the video for that device on the info card on the right or on my channel. The wooden bat that the Navimo previously ran over was avoided this time. Even the small flower pot and the small hedgehog figurine were excellently detected. However, not much has changed with the Luba since then. Very small objects under about 10 centimeters in height should be approached with caution as they were not correctly detected in my test. I definitely hope for some fine tuning of the detection software in this regard. Another difference I noticed is how the robots react when they encounter an obstacle. While the Luba makes a detour around the obstacle to continue straight, the Navimo turns around and mows the area behind the obstacle at a later time. I couldn't determine any direct advantages or disadvantages regarding efficiency or the mowing result from this. Additionally, the Luba has an advantage as it is equipped with ultrasonic sensors and a bumper in addition to the camera, which also help with obstacle detection. For example, in the dark or in very tall grass, the camera alone is useless and the robot can then rely on the other sensors. Lastly, a few brief words about the comparison of the cut to edge function or the edge trimming of the robots. One thing I can say right away, without a sufficiently wide mowing edge, both devices will leave a certain edge strip as the cutting disc is positioned in the middle and not on the side. Moreover, we need a certain buffer to prevent the devices from accidentally scraping along the edge. So the question is, how wide is the edge strip? Without delving deeper into the exact settings of the devices, I can say that the edge strip with the Luba in edge trimming mode is about 20 to 25 centimeters, while the Navimo leaves an edge strip of about 15 to 20 centimeters. There isn't a significant difference in this regard. However, with protruding edges, both will require additional trimming. Okay, now we've thoroughly examined both devices in direct comparison, so let's move on to the conclusion. Based on the following criteria, you can determine which of the two mower robots is right for you. The more of the mentioned points apply or are confirmed, the more likely the model is suitable for your garden. So, let's get started. Navimo. I have only a small to medium-sized garden to manage. I have at least one spot in my garden where there are no large trees or buildings nearby. 
Alternatively, I have no problem mounting the antenna at a high point, such as on my roof. I have no extreme slopes of over 30% in my garden. I have no extreme unevenness in my lawn. I don't plan to create more than 12 zones. Precise obstacle detection is very important to me, and an especially easy-to-use app is important to me. Luba. I have a small to extremely large garden to manage and want to create one or many zones. I have partially significant shading from trees or buildings nearby. I have some steep slopes or uneven areas in my lawn. A quick completion of the mowing is important to me. I am willing to spend a bit more for a solid device. And medium-sized obstacle detection is sufficient for me at the moment. In the long term, however, I would still wish for an improvement in the detection of smaller objects. So far, so good. I hope this video helped you in your decision-making process. Which mower robot did you choose and why? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. You can find the current prices of the devices to support this channel in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support, and if you like the video, please show it with a thumbs up to help promote the video. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel and activate the bell to make sure you don't miss any future videos. So stay healthy, take care, and see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>